Major League Baseball has a serious jersey problem. You could say this all started in 2019 after Nike signed a $1 billion contract to take over producing jerseys from Majestic for the next 10 years. But what is Major League Baseball without controversy? In 2016, MLB announced that Under Armour would be replacing Majestic as the official uniform provider for all teams. Then, in a last minute switch up, it was Nike who took over in 2019. This was the start of the problem with the on and off field jerseys. From there, it's been very hit or miss with Nike in charge. The All-Star Game jerseys are generally bland and boring, the City Connect jerseys are done either incredibly well or are absolute misses, and now the day-to-day -day uniform is taking a hit. Where did the fury begin? Corporate logos on uniforms. Now, keep in mind Majestic did have their company logo very discreetly hidden on the left sleeve of jerseys, but Nike took this to a new level. They did pay $1 billion to make you well aware that this is a Nike product. They put the Nike swoosh on the front of every single on-field jersey, including the replicas. This made baseball fans furious. Now, why is that? Why do fans care so much? Well, there was always a sense of pride with how free of corporate sponsorship and logos MLB uniforms had. They just straight up simply looked clean, but most people saw the writing on the wall. This was only just the beginning because now MLB teams and owners saw an opportunity. It has been reported that all teams bring in an additional $3 million worth of revenue due to allowing the Nike logo on the uniform exactly where it is. Rumors soon started swirling that more corporate sponsorship would be visible on team uniforms. However, to the surprise of many, this didn't happen in 2020 or 21 because it just simply wasn't allowed. Then, as a part of the new collective bargaining agreement, MLB agreed to allow teams to sell sponsor logo placement on uniforms. They opted for sleeve placements for these logos considering the batters and pitcher stances and it gave the best visibility and opportunity to show these logos off while on TV and in person. April of 2022 came along and those rumors as well as what the CBA said was going to come became a reality. The San Diego Padres were the first team to reach a uniform ad deal and it was with Motorola. Their logo on one of the sleeves was fairly large by design. Obviously, the larger the logo, the more people would notice, which is the whole point. Before the 2022 season started, 7 out of 30 teams announced sponsorship deals and by the end of the 2023 season, the number is now 14 out of 30 teams. This even included the New York Yankees, a team with strict grooming rules, refusing to have an alternate jersey, and even rumored to refuse to have a City Connect jersey made for them. But with all that said, there were never really any complaints coming from the players about the jersey looks or the level of comfort. Now that we've gone through the brief history of the downfall of the on-field jersey from a fan perspective, let's get to what this video is really about. In 2024, the Nike on-field uniforms are now being manufactured by Fanatics, a well-known sports retailer that spans across all four major North American sports, MLS, NASCAR, Formula One, the WWE, and the Japanese Professional Baseball League. And now, not only are fans not happy with the uniforms, the players who will be wearing them on a daily basis are also not happy with them. We got our first good look at the 2024 uniform during the Shohei Otani introduction to the Dodgers press conference. This is where we all saw a strange design choice. After the capital D, instead of the jersey having a clean break between the O and the D, we can see that there's a weird overlap on part of the second D on our left looking at this picture. We can also see it looks like the number in the front is now perforated. Now let's look at the back of the new uniforms. We can see in plenty of examples that the font for both the name on the back and the numbers are smaller. Additionally, the MLB logo now no longer sits towards the top of the collar. It's much lower down and the name on the back of the jersey has a much higher arc. Numbers are also perforated on the back as well. Lastly, it looks like team sleeve logos are no longer embroidered and closely resemble something like a heat press application. Very low quality looking in my honest opinion. Now we move over to the player complaints. Pitcher and catchers have reported to 2024 spring training and there are already issues that they are seeing. I suspect the complaints will grow as more players report to spring training. 
Players have been quoted as saying they look cheap. Miles Michaelis, starting pitcher for the Cardinals, said they don't fit right, pants are no longer as customizable, and the fabric is a very different consistency. Taylor Ward from the Angels said, it looks like a replica. It feels kind of like papery. It could be great when you're out there sweating. It may be breathable, but I haven't had that opportunity yet to try that out. But from the looks of it, it doesn't look like a $450 jersey. So far, thumbs down. Angels reliever Carlos Estevez pulled out a few jerseys and pants to show how the shades don't match. He laughed at the smaller numbers, spacing, and last names on the back of the jerseys and is annoyed that they can't customize his pants to his preferences anymore, like pitchers could in the past. Nike is claiming that the jerseys are softer, stretchier, and lighter, but from what we can see so far, they look closer to a replica jersey than an official authentic on-field jersey from years past. And nothing that we've seen so far indicate that this is a $400 plus dollar jersey that we see on MLB.com or an official team store. In fact, here's a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left is a Mariners 2023 replica jersey, and on the right, it's this year's replica. You can see the poor quality and the poor design choice. There's tons of empty space and ultimately just looks like corners are being cut to save production costs per jersey. When asked about this during a press conference, Commissioner Rob Manfred asked for patience and that everything will be fine. He's quoted as saying, we always pay attention to what anyone is saying about the new initiative. With baseball, any new initiative, there's going to be some negative feedback. First, and most importantly, these are Nike jerseys. We entered this relationship with Nike because of who they are and the kinds of products they produce. Everything they've done for us so far has been absolutely 100% successful across the board. He continues to say that these jerseys are different and they've been designed to be performance wear as opposed to what has been worn in years past. He goes on to say that they've been tested more extensively than any jersey in any sport and ultimately he thinks after people wear them a little bit, they're going to be very popular. Now let's get to what players are doing about this. It has been reported that some players have already complained directly to Nike and have also gone to the players union as well. This means inevitably to some degree the MLBPA will get involved. Fanatics has a very long history of being hated by fans across all sports, citing poor quality and prices that just get higher and higher. Their jerseys fall apart quicker than other brands, they've turned to heat pressing as a cheap and lazy way to cut costs, and many feel at this point it would be very surprising if any positive changes are made to uniforms both off and on the field moving forward. But will MLB hold Fanatics and Nike accountable for lowering standards that both their audience and players hate? Well, it's impossible to know the kind of debt MLB owes to Nike. Baseball chased invisible money with Under Armour and ultimately Nike bailed MLB out. Nike has since then decided to not manufacture the jerseys and hand that problem off to Fanatics. However, Fanatics is a subcontractor to Nike. Nike is who ultimately decided to move the MLB logo lower and made the decision to change the font sizes. They changed the home jerseys from white to off-white. They changed the belt loops amongst other things. And additionally, according to Nike, they said they did consult with MLB players and said that they body scanned over 300 players while researching and developing the jerseys and pants that we are seeing appear today in spring training. They formally debuted these uniforms in the 2023 All-Star Game in Seattle with players generally liking them, so overall it remains to be seen if this is being completely overblown or if this is just the start of the complaints. But in any case, one thing is for sure. From what we've seen so far, they do look cheaper and they will surely be more expensive to buy. P.S. to NHL fans, unfortunately, next season, Fanatics is taking over your uniform contract and will be using their own design specs, so this video may be a trip to your future. Thanks for watching. What do you think of the new uniform designs? Sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.